Hey everybody, today we're going to be tying up a soft hackle sow bug. This is one of my absolute favorite fly patterns. Uh, I fish it any rivers where there's, uh, where there's sow bugs. Uh, it's one of my go-to patterns on the lower Provo. I've caught fish on it on the lower Provo, the middle Provo, uh, the Weber River, the Bighorn River. It crushes fish out there. Caught them on the Missouri, on the Beaverhead. Uh, it's just an all-around good sow bug pattern. And what I like about this particular pattern is it accomplishes a few things that most other sow bug patterns don't. Most sow bug patterns you see are just a standard dubbing tied around a hook and then picked out and cut into a square the shape of a sow bug. The issue with those patterns, number one, they're a pain in the butt to tie, kind of. And as a guide, I have to crank out a ton of flies, and I hate flies that take too long. This is a super simple pattern to tie. Um, so that's one thing that's good about it. The other thing is most sow bugs have a lot of movement. If you ever pluck a sow bug up out of the water, you'll notice that they're... Their legs are going all sorts of places. They're kind of crazy. And most of the dubbings used in most sow bug patterns are really stiff and rigid. So what you get is something that looks like a little block just floating down the river with very little movement. Whereas the real bugs actually have a lot of movement. And they're doing all sorts of crazy things down there. Uh, it's also a very natural color which a lot of sow bug patterns don't have you'll see them a lot there where they're too light or they're even rainbow colors things like that so this is just a super imitative caddis or uh not caddis pattern um sow bug pattern that pretty much it's my go-to it catches me loads of fish um it's not anything too crazy as far as like being unique umqua actually has a pattern in their catalog that's very similar to this but it is tied as a caddis and it's got basically a lot more of a trim body thinner um and that's kind of where this varies a little bit from that pattern the key with this bug is to make it look as ugly as possible. Like I said, when you actually like look at a real sow bug, they're pretty ugly. They got legs kicking everywhere. They're doing all sorts of crazy things. So you really don't want a tightly dubbed body. You want it to be sticking out all over the place doing crazy things. And this pattern accomplishes that. So to start off, we've got a Daiichi 1120 hook in a size 14. I typically tie these in 14, 16s, and 18s. Um, I really like these hooks because they're relatively cheap. Uh, they've got the 2X heavy wire. Uh, Daiichi has a similar hook that's a finer wire, and that hook I am not a fan of because it tends to bend a lot. Um, so yeah, that Daiichi 1120 is what we're starting off right there. As far as thread, I like to go natural color. So we're going to be sticking with a brown thread. I actually don't know exactly which brown thread I'm using. A lot of times I use Danville 70 in brown. Um, just whatever brown thread you happen to have in that 70 denier size or 80 size will work just fine. So we're going to start off tying to the hook. And I always like to do the little Kelly Gallup trick where I start the thread where my head's going to begin. And I don't allow myself to wrap over that. So we're going to do some wraps rearward, trim that thread right there. The next thing we're going to do is add some extra small gold wire. Uh, gold, silver, it doesn't really matter. This wire is in there really for durability because the dubbing is going to be really picky and crazy. So we're not really going to achieve any segmentation with this. And thicker wires tend to like clump down those fibers anyways. So we're going to go with an extra small just to give it some durability. I'm just going to tie that in and I'm going to work down to the bend of the hook. Then I'm going to go back up to the middle of the hook shank with my thread. And the reason we're doing that is um, sow bugs, we're going to go over that middle part a few times. Uh, if you look at the naturals, they tend to have a thicker spot in the middle of them and then they taper out on each end. So we're going to start right in the middle. For the dubbing, we're going to be using a dubbing that I actually make myself. Um, can't really see it there, kind of. Um, all I do to get this dubbing is I buy a hair's mask, um, the entire mask, and I shave it. I shave everything off the ears, all the under fur. I shave every little thing off of it and then mix it together. I personally use the trick where you stick it in a mason jar, fill it with water, mix it up, and then drain the water out. 
and then let the dubbing dry. That'll mix all the fibers together. Um, the reason I do that is this dubbing blend is going to give you, it's really soft so it dubs really easy, but it also has a lot of fibers that are really picky and go out all over the place. Um, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get like all sorts of crazy fibers, but a soft, easy fiber to dub. Uh, if you need, you can substitute just regular hair's ear or hair's mask, uh, but making it yourself is pretty easy. When you do it one time, uh, you've got dubbing to last you like a whole year. So, when I go to dub this, I typically do it in small chunks. I don't do like one big noodle. I just do it in small little chunks. So I'm just going to add dubbing as I go. Just going to get a dubbing noodle. And you'll notice, I don't really care if it's all crazy down there. It's a pretty big dubbing noodle. Doesn't really matter. I don't want it to be a super trim body. I want it to kind of be a thicker body. So, I've got a pretty big noodle. I'm going to start wrapping rearwards towards the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to start going forwards. Okay. Now as I go, I'll kind of pick that dubbing out and brush it back like that. Just to get all those crazy fibers. That simulates their legs. And you'll see how picky and kind of crazy that is. It's not pretty. This fly, if it comes out pretty, you're probably doing it wrong. It's supposed to be really ugly. Okay, I'm going to add some more dubbing. And now I'm going to start getting careful to not add too much dubbing. Okay, I've got a little bit of a weird taper there. I fixed that. And do a little bit more. You'll notice I'm getting that front taper a little bit. Now I just need a tiny bit more. Super small chunk. Okay. Come in here. Perfect. Now you'll see I start to brush that back because I'm going to actually put a soft tackle right up here. But before I do that, I'm going to wrap my thread or my uh, wire forward. I'm going to do about four or five wraps. It just kind of depends on the size. Okay. Tie it off right there. The other thing that stroking those fibers back does is it's really easy on this fly to trap a bunch of fibers up at the front. So we're going to pull them back, start wrapping some thread there. Then I like to, with my fingers, you can also use a little comb with Velcro on it. I kind of like to brush it out. Any fibers that got trapped by that wire, I want nice and loose. Nice and crazy there. Now, the final part of this fly is super important. Uh, we've got a soft tackle on there, and I've tried a lot of different soft tackle fibers on this, and I have found that Hungarian partridge definitely makes a difference on this fly. Um, having the partridge feather, it seems to just catch more. I've tried hen hackles, things like that. Uh, they just have seemed to not catch as many fish. I think it has to do with the color and the movement. Uh, again, the color is really natural um, as opposed to, um, you know, darker or way too light. And the fibers are super limp. So, on these small soft tackles on the Hungarian partridge skin, I'm going to be picking them off of where the neck of the bird is. Okay, I'm not going to be picking it off down here in the lower part where you get those big fibers. It's going to be up where the head of the bird would be. Uh, this skin looks a little rough. It's actually a bird I shot up in Idaho this year and preserved because hun skins are expensive. So the closer you get to where the head of the bird would be, the smaller the feathers are going to be. And that's going to apply to any sort of cape you get. Um, so if you're tying small dry flies and you got a small dry fly cape, go ahead and start picking feathers up for your smaller flies off that front end where the head would be on the bird. So I've gone and I am going to select a feather from there. Um, size isn't insanely critical on this because again it's kind of an ugly fly you kind of want that movement so a big crazy hackle isn't the end of the world you don't want it huge but um, you know size isn't crucial I'm not going to be like measuring it up against the uh, up against the hook or anything so I do my soft tackles a little different I actually tie them in from the base Lock it down a few times, trim the butt, 
Then I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers. I've got the CNF hackle pliers, which are really nice for working with Hungarian partridge because it tends to break a lot. And we're just going to do about one and a half wraps of hackle. Then I'm going to pinch that down, lock it down with a few wraps, pull this forward, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim that tip of the feather off. Boom. Now, with this fly, it's uh, I think it's A. Kate Best who said, how many turns on a whip finish do you need? And he said, as many to cover up your mistakes. We're just going to cover up all those little fibers and then go ahead and whip finish. And the fly is complete. Again, you'll notice I got a really picky body. I've got that soft tackle. Um, so I get a lot of movement like the natural sow bugs. Super quick tie, pretty much three materials with the wire, the dubbing, and the soft tackle. You can crank out a ton, and this fly absolutely crushes fish. So go ahead, give it a try out there, and uh, enjoy the fishing.